Hey guys, in this video, I'll be showing you how you can perform analysis of multivariable control systems by using MATLAB and or Simulink. Now, first, let's talk about what a multivariable control system is. So many real systems in engineering are multivariable control. For example, a car can be driven by the steering wheel, also the gas pedal, right? So you have two inputs there. And the outputs, what the car can give you, is that the car can drive at some speed. So it has velocity as an output. It also has things like how fast the, the wheels are spinning at, how much fuel consumption it has. You can represent a linear multivariable control system in a state space format. As you all know, state space is given by x dot equals ax plus bu and y dot equals cx plus du. So here, a is the system matrix, it parameterizes the system, B is your input matrix, C is what's measured, and D is the feedforward term. For simplicity, we can drop off the D because we, we don't need feedforward now. When it comes to dimensions, this is where it is very important. So basically how big the matrices are. So let's say you have N states, M inputs, and P outputs. So what's going to happen is this. For the A matrix, it'll be N by N. For the B matrix, it'll be N by M. So it'll be like the number of states times the number of inputs. Because U is simply a column vector of M, since those are your inputs. You can see an example here on the MATLAB workspace, what it looks like. And now let's move on to MATLAB. So we're in MATLAB now, and the first thing I did was I copied everything all the matrices from the work website into here so when we run this we can first see that you have your states there your four states beta yaw roll and phi and outputs are yaw rate bank angle inputs are rudder and aileron so the ss command converts this into the state space representation and you can see what it looks like here so since we have four states our a matrix is four by four Let's run this and see what it looks like. Type in sys underscore memo and you can see your A, B, C and D there. And it shows you a better representation. Next, we can convert it to a transfer function. So the command for that is actually TF, but the math can be seen here. You can represent time domain and S domain because you have the Laplace transform to convert between the two forms. So here you will see that each input will lead to two outputs. Rudder can convert the yaw rate and the bank angle, and same with the aileron, because you have two outputs and two inputs. This is an underlying concept of multivariable control, where you can use either controller A or B to adjust any of the outputs you want. The transfer functions will end up in a matrix, because that is what you get when you apply the Laplace command. And here I just selected J1,1, so let's see what that looks like. It's rudder to yaw rate. Similarly, if I do J2,2, I will get aileron to bank angle, and I can do the same for the others as well. So system stability is determined by the eigenvalues, and let's take a look at that now. Type in EIGA, and you will see that they are all negative, which means that all of them lie in the negative side of the S domain. The eigenvalues in state space also equal the poles of the transfer function, as you can see here. Because if you look at the formula, it's 1 over determinant times the adjoint. If you are a little confused by this, let me explain you here. Say if you have a function, and if all the function's roots are on the negative side, it means that it's a stable function, because in the time domain, the function will decay. So we can drag in Simulink and drag a state space block and type in a b c and d as you can see here for the initial conditions type in all zeros because that is what we are going to do for now next you can drag in a couple of mux blocks uh two scopes for yaw and bank angle because those are your outputs also we can drag in two more step inputs for rudder and aileron so let's run this and see what it looks like now it looks like it's unstable but the thing is that we're not running the simulation for too long it's only been 10 seconds so let's make those inputs zero for the rudder and aileron and then go into state space command and then put in non-zero initial conditions there 
So now let's see what happens. The system is responding with no inputs from a non-zero initial condition. When you run this, you can see that the graph is sinusoidal and it is converging towards a constant value. And this proves that due to we saw that the eigenvalues are on the stable side, our system here is stable. We can also do some more stuff. We can check for observability and controllability. So this is very important if you're designing a feedback control system. As you all know in engineering, you have state feedback. So let's first define what observability and controllability are. So starting with observability, if you have the outputs Y at some point in time, you can use that and a control command to estimate what the initial states were. We also have controllability. So controllability is, is a little bit more intuitive. It's basically that say if you have initial states X naught, you can apply a continuous input U to achieve a final state XF. And that is what controllability is. You do that by going into MATLAB and tapping in CTRB A and B and just checking the rank. It should be equal to N, which is four in this case. Similarly for observability, we can tap in OBSV, but here I have to run the model again. So OBSV A and C and check the rank, it's four. So that means that our system is observable. This is very important if we're designing an estimator. Also, we have uh, transfer functions there. So let's look at the step responses and let's make sure that our system is indeed stable. So you can see how in the step response it is converging for rudder to yaw rate. We can also do it for the other transfer functions. So this one is here for aileron to bank angle. Similarly for rudder to bank angle and lastly for also the other one. So I hope you guys learned something about the fundamentals of multivariable control. I will stop at this point because in my future videos I'll be covering specific examples of controller design where I'll be looking into things like LQR, state feedback and so on. But that'll be too much to cover now so I've decided to end it here. Um, please watch this video a few times if you're misunderstanding some concepts because this video is the fundamental stuff which you will need to know if you want to design your own controllers. So these concepts of controllability and stuff like that are very crucial because they are forming the base of what you can do as an engineer. So with that being said, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. And in my next video, as you all know by the poll which I posted, I'll be covering aircraft flight dynamics. So have a good weekend and take care. Bye-bye.